St. John's and our morning prayer service. We're delighted that you're here with us. My name is Deacon Tom Hampson, and we'll be beginning in probably about five minutes. Thanks so much for being here, and have a blessed new year.
Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Hallelujah! To us the child is born, come let us pray. Hallelujah! Please be seated. Psalm 8. I'll read the phrase with the asterisk and you follow with the non asterisk. Thank you. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, what is man that you should be mindful of him? Son of man that you should seek him out. You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adore him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the hands of the sea. O Lord, our Governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Together, glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the, at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Together let us recite the, the third psalm of Isaiah. <coughs> Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has gone upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, the gloom shrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. Your wealth will call salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your glory will be in your love. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be 
Please be seated. This is a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and as had been told to them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Please stand. Together, let us recite the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked upon the favor of his beloved servant. From this generation, the Almighty the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of the servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. Actually, don't get too comfortable yet. I said I made you stand up in just a moment. The last time I preached on this same passage in Luke, I told the story from the perspective of the shepherd who didn't go. I mean, after all, someone had to stay back here to watch the sheep. And, you know, those voices, maybe they were just the wind blowing and, you know, I don't believe in that, that kind of stuff anyway. And after all, it was a bit of a curmudgeon. Didn't really like children a lot, let alone babies. But today I'm going to tell it differently. And I invite you all to join me over at the crash because this isn't just a nice decorative thing something to walk past. It's the center. So please, if you're able, please stand and come over. Sit in the pews near it or stand there.
comfortable for you to stand. Please feel free to sit in one of the pews here. You're welcome to stand around. When I was a small child, about this big, we lived in Chicago. And at that time, the department stores in downtown Chicago all had these beautiful picture windows that they decorated for Christmas. By our standards today, the decorations would look kind of awkward and amateurish, but what they had were early animations, little mechanical figures that acted out different scenes. And so my parents took me. From the time I was little, once a year we'd go down, just not to shop, just to see these amazing windows. There was the window with the ice skaters, this little artificial looking lake and these little mechanical skaters that jerkily walked around it. And there were the polar bears and the snowmen and Santa. And some of them, this being before the days of consciousness about welcoming everybody, some of them were religious scenes. Well, my family heritage is Jewish by culture. Very clear that we didn't like anything that had to do with things that were anti-Jewish, like Christianity, which thought at that time that the Jews really were bad people because they hadn't accepted Christ. And even more so, we were against religion in general. <laughs> so I don't quite know how my parents conveyed this to me. Maybe we just walked past a little bit faster. Maybe they didn't answer questions. Maybe they didn't say, ooh, and all of it. But when it came to the crush scenes, we didn't pay them as much attention as we did the secular ones, the ice skating and the polar bears. But somehow I knew, despite that, that there was a brightness, a holy magic in these scenes that I wasn't allowed to come close to. This is the center of our faith. God with us. God came down among us to live as one of us. At the time that Jesus was born, there were a lot of gods in the universe. A lot of gods were worshipped by people around there. There was the god of war, the god of peace, the god of thunder, the god of the sun, the god who made the, the land become fertile, the god that kept the ocean smooth so that ships could sail smoothly, the god of death. It was probably a god of the toenail fungus for all I know, but there were a lot of gods. And the gods, they didn't really seem to care about people a whole lot. They were jealous, they feuded among themselves, they got people involved in the wars between the gods. You needed to please or placate the gods if you didn't offer the right sacrifice or somebody offered a competing god a better sacrifice, your ship went down over the ocean, your crops failed, your loved one died. Out of that, somehow, something completely unknown happened. Or so the story says. God, our God, loved the world. Our God loved the world enough to come and be among us as a tiny child. A child who was hungry and cold, wanted to be loved, a child who probably had colic from time to time, who stumbled when he learned to walk. A child who took delight in butterflies and chased pigeons and grew up to tease his friends when they first had a on a girl. A child who grew up to tell stories and talk about the love of God. A child who grew up to act in such a way that people came to say, this person, this is the closest a human could ever be to being God. This was God. And so the stories were told that on the night of Jesus' birth, the angels and all the heavens sang. 
and the star shone brightly, and a star traveled from afar to stop over where Jesus lay. And the angel spoke to the shepherds, and they said, come, come see. Shepherds came and joined. Was it really that way? If we'd had cameras all over, you know, the street cams that catch everything, would we be able to prove that? Maybe, maybe not. But it's still the truth, because that's the way it must have been. For God to so love the world, there must have been angels singing. There must have been shepherds who came. There must have been wise men. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think I was gesturing that vigorously. <laughs> <laughs> there must have been the deepest love imaginable. And those shepherds, they aren't famous people. This is kind of like having a, wed a royal wedding in England, and the people that got invited weren't the peers of the realm and the famous people throughout the world, the other world leaders. Instead, the people who came and were invited were the busboys in the restaurants and the maids in the hotel and the farm workers. Everyone, the ordinary people, the unimportant people, came drawn to adore God with us. We had a number of ideas for this service. Sometimes we kind of bounce ideas off of each other ahead of time. And when we realized that today was not only the second Sunday of Christmas, but also New Year's Day, well, we had this idea that nobody would really want to come to church on New Year's Day, so we should invite all of you to come in your pajamas and fuzzy <laughs> slippers. And then we had the idea that this being the first day of the New Year, maybe we should invite everybody to write down a resolution, a resolution about creation care, about doing one more thing for the environment. But this is the second Sunday of Easter, and the crush is still here, and the child is still calling us to know what it means to be that deeply loved and to act in love. So whatever you do, Whatever resolutions you make, whatever your choices this day and going forward, don't do it out of a sense of responsibility. Don't do it because somebody says you should. Don't do it out of guilt or shame. Whatever your choices are, do it out of that kind of love. God with us, the name that was given to the child, God saves, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus, the God who saves, the God among us, the God who is love. Amen. Amen. together profess our faith. I believe in God, Father of God, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered and conscious Father, was crucified and died as a spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. Lord, we will Lord, trust us in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave to your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us together recite the collect for the search. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, the gracious man of the church, and so thy promise those who shall choose a director for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us with the ministry of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Soul Kitchen 
Friday of January 27th. So it is the first Sunday of the month. And Mike is off. Now it's So are there any birthdays or anniversaries that we need to celebrate? Try to say it. so. All right. In that case, let me just recite this offertory sentence and invite your support for this parish, either through contributions to the plate or on Gimlify. The information about that is, as you know, in the bulletin. Let us, with gladness, present the offerings and our life and our labor. Our anthem today is also going to change. Uh, I came down with a bit of laryngitis, so uh, I was going to sing the people that walk in darkness can handle that. It's not working for me today. <laughs> so, Christy, you're going to play. Uh, it's called Praise is Greatness, and it's a memory of the hymn of the God and Great is the Lord.
Please join in the prayer for sending out Elaine as our Eucharistic visitor. In the name of St. John the Baptist Episcopal Church, we send you forth very thankful gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one God, because we all share the heart of God. Let us together recite the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all of the community. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your word and measure of love. In the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, for the hope of the Lord, and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips and in our lives, but giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness of all our days. Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son. Though when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to Him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.
Like a lane. Okay. I think so. Yes. <laughs> 